So when I when I arrived here, um, or in Spain was was so different, and and I, I used to work in a research center for like ten years. Research in what? In biomass. Okay. Um, I was going to ask you how you got into it, but here we go. I am agronomist with a specialization in industrial crops. So my, my specialization take me to canaf, to to fiber crops, to all those, and oil crops, protein crops, starch crops, uh, crops for biochar. I just registered some weeks ago biochar crops that come. <laughs> when did the biochar cropping come in? I started with biochar in 2014 with a partnership and friendship of Albert Bates, which is a, it's a Albert Bates. Albert Bates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know him? Yeah. 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 More, uh, more. Um, yeah, trying to become more. Uh, I mean, the company, a company like yours, manufacturing a product and also offering know-how, can grow a lot. A uh, company in, consult in consultation, you can grow much. So now, then, uh, what I did is to have a branch, a separate company with some two partners, and start this execution. What we do as a company is to facilitate the industry. So we go to a place. And we start up the farm, nurseries, agronomies, foresters, uh, offtake assessments, environmental assessment, visibility assessment, land assessment, operational satellite management, traditional agriculture, whatever we do, we, we land there. So the industry comes and finds, say what you're doing. finds the supply chain capacity already to launch a factory. So, so I'm trying to do that with biochar units, controllers as well. So what we're doing is uh, this period where I am evaluating, period I am evaluating, uh, Pyreg is a pyrolysis equipment company, it's not a, a system, so all of those. And your 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 equipment is also attractive for some business models because it's so small. Yeah, and so and then for hotels, for tourism, for, for uh, regeneration in different ways, uh, tourism, agriculture. Yeah, communities, industry, etc. And it, the, the good about the plantations using biochar is that you can be very attractive for carbon financing. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think looking the industry is changing in the last two years. The carbon credits, people, well, it, it makes a better business sense, and business sense too. Yeah, you can make a living out of biochar, but you can get this extra money from right. carbon credits. So I'm seeing my. In my company, I'm seeing a lot more bigger businesses are becoming interested in investment. You know, I'm, I've worked with that system. Did I told you that? I, 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 yeah, I think I, think I knew something that yeah, they were working with that system, but I don't know how. Yeah, yeah, when I was um, first getting into biochar, I was building at home just as a hobby different yeah, yeah. retorts. to commercialize and I wanted to you know, fill in love with the biochar idea. And I wanted to make commercial quantities. Um, and I sent Earth Systems my resume and some videos and photos of what I've done using the CBS to heat up the retort at home. And they were interested, they needed somebody with the mechanical skills um, who was also passionate about the biochar. And then and they said, well, we need somebody to help us build uh, an MVP 20, 20 foot container. Um, but they said, it's only maybe six weeks work. I said, okay, I'll take it. And so I moved my family to another part of the country um, and just did it. Went there, built an MVP 20, which is a 20 foot container machine, and then took it around the country on the road show, showing farmers all around the country. In different parts in really hostile desert areas and tough areas. Um, and just talk to lots of farmers 
and other even beekeepers were interested because they knew that if the plants did well, the bees would make more honey. So there was lots of oh, synergy. Are... Um, and we worked on um, some landfill sites um, where the waste would go to be buried and we diverted it from landfill and made a product. And so I did that for a few years and, and we worked So clients are owners of like places or resorts or different different clients, yeah. Homes and you know. Big machines. Um, I found that it, it wasn't suitable for farms, or well, not for small farms at least. Because there was a lot of capital outlay in the um, but for big, bigger businesses and really big farms, it's, it's more suitable. And that's what I discovered when talking to many farms around the country. The feedback I kept getting was it's, it was too big for the common farmers. And, and when I went to, I installed a book on Hong Kong with a dry unit which used the heat to dry the wood for tomorrow. Um, and I got talking to a guy who came to visit us there who was looking for biochar technology, but he, he said it was too cumbersome to move. This was for a guy in New Guinea who it's very steep terrain um, and I don't have a lot of money. Uh, so I said it's too expensive and too cumbersome, um, not mobile enough. He said he wanted it to be on a trailer behind a car and he had to run just on wood. No diesel, no electricity, no extra fuel. Um, and so when I left Hong Kong, I designed the units that I uh, designed for now. You have two sizes right now, right? Yeah, yeah. But they work the same, so you can just run it on the wood to get it started, and they're both trailable behind the car. So is it today you you are offering in Australia and abroad, or only in Australia? Oh, all over the world, all over the world, and, and they basically you did like some partnerships with groups or something. Um, yeah, not, not with, so, with, but, uh, so some of the people who are customers are involved in research, similar to yourself, and they're interested in biomass to biochar, trialing different feedstocks, mm -hmm. and that's happening. In Lebanon and Finland and Sweden and a couple of other places. Um, but a lot of people, a lot of my customers are just small farmers or semi retired people who are looking for a, a small income as a hobby. They sell the biochar, they bring yeah, it the house, yeah. they get the They might have a small farm, to, they to use it for their farm. Gardeners, or the culture. And they can grow more produce and make a bit more money from that. But then they have extra biochar which they sell. Do they fail in applying the biochar without good results sometimes? I've, or they can? To, I've seen mixed results, but I've never seen bad results. Um, I always recommend to people start with about 10% of the topsoil by volume. That seems to be a pretty good starting place, I think especially if it's put in raw, uninoculated, because you don't want to compete with the plants. So if you're putting it in raw, don't put more than 10% in. Yeah, um, yeah. In time, it will flourish. Um, but if, if you've inoculated it, yeah, you can put 20% in, sure. But, uh, yeah, we've got, I think we're in about 16 countries now. Um, we have more than 30 units. Um, yeah, 
it's been very well received.